Hi, I'm Nandi. I'm a licensed midwife, a trained doula and a mother of three. Welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to talk about the most common hospital routines that you may encounter uh, when you give birth in a hospital in Sweden. So if you're pregnant and planning to give birth in a hospital in Sweden, this is the video for you. In this video, I will not um, cover the most common routines in prenatal care. But if you would like me to make a video on that, uh, please leave a comment uh, under this video and I will get to that at a later date. First and foremost, I want to remind you that all healthcare in Sweden is optional. Uh, so you have a right to make choices of how you want your stay in hospital to follow. There will be, of course, routines in the hospital that you can opt in or out of. But the choice is ultimately yours. Once you arrive in the hospital uh, in labor, I would say all hospitals uh, probably will offer you a CTG um, monitoring. So a CTG monitors the baby's heart rate or if there are several babies, uh, the baby's in plural heart rate, uh, as well as the frequency of uh, the contractions. Um, uh, how long this CTG will go on varies uh, depending on what it looks like and, and what they're looking for and so on. But I would say in general terms between 20 and 40 minutes. Um, in some hospitals, they prefer you to lay down during this time uh, and might not have a cordless option for you to move around in the room. And in some hospitals, they will have a cordless option where you can move around in the room. Um, if you feel uncomfortable laying down uh, during CTG, CTG monitoring, please let your midwife know so they can um, help you uh, be monitored in the best way that works for you and your body. Sometimes before CTG monitoring or during or after, the midwife will check the baby's position in the um, in the uterus and in the pelvis. This is, might be something that you're used to from a prenatal care. Uh, it's just to check where the baby's position is and how far along it is and also make sure that it is head down if that is the plan for you to have a head down birth and not a breech birth. Um, so that might be the previous step to the CTG or happen during the CTG or after, depending on a little bit what their routines are and um, sometimes also how busy the midwife is. After the CTG monitoring and in some cases during the CTG monitoring, monitoring you will be offered a vaginal exam. Now a vaginal exam is when the midwife uh, exams you vaginally to see uh, what most people know as the dilation. So the dilation is between zero and 10 centimeters, and this is the cervical dilation, so how open the cervix is to let the baby out. Um, she will use two fingers to do this uh, vaginal exam, and for some people this might be very uncomfortable. So if you feel uncomfortable or need to, to, to slow down or stop or, or so on, just communicate this to your midwife uh, before or during. Uh, you can also choose to opt out of uh, vaginal exams altogether, of course, because this is your choice since it's your body. The midwife will not only ch just check the cervical dilation, he or she will also check uh, how um, the baby's rotation in the, in the pelvis. So how far down in the pelvis uh, the baby is, as well as how the baby is rotating its head uh, to descend. Um, so it might take a little while uh, during this exam to figure out all those pieces out. But it's good to know that, that these are several things that the midwife is showing um, is checking for. After the vaginal exam, there might be different courses of action depending on uh, the exam and, and the, how you're feeling, the frequency of your contractions and so on. So the midwife might uh, feel that you still have a long way to go to, uh, for your uh, labor to 
progress and might suggest for you to return home, maybe with something called a sore dose, which is um, basically some medication that will help you relax, maybe sleep or at least rest uh, to conserve your energy uh, and let your body still um, do what it needs to for the baby to be born. So this might be option number one. If uh, you are in what is called active labor, uh, this still varies a little bit where uh, the midwives feel when you're in active labor or not, but around four to five centimeters dilation and regular contractions. Um, then the midwife might uh, suggest you stay uh, because you're about to have a baby um, and this is a really good time then to if you haven't already hand your midwife the birth plan uh, if you need tips on how to write a birth plan I have a video on that so I will leave that in the description below at this point you might also be offered some pain, medical pain relief uh, or non-medical pain relief depending on what uh, your preferences are. Uh, so it's good to know what options are available to you. Um, I'm planning on doing um, a video on pain relief um, in the coming weeks. So uh, I will not cover that in, in this video. Um, so depending on if you are deemed to be a low risk pregnancy, medium or a high risk preg pregnancy, uh, the care around you might vary a little bit. But if you're low, uh, deemed to be a low risk pregnancy, which would be you have had a healthy pregnancy, you plan to have a non-complicated healthy birth, uh, then uh, you will only be taken care of by the midwife during your stay in the hospital, unless something um, unexpected happens, of course. Um, and it will be the midwife that is responsible for your care. Are you medium or high risk? It could be that you have previous illnesses or complications during pregnancy or so on. Uh, a doctor will be included in your care. But that doesn't mean that you necessarily will see that doctor during your stay in hospital. So... Uh, if everything goes as planned, the doctor might just be briefed by the midwife what is going on in your care. And if the doctor needs uh, to be in the room for your care to progress, uh, then the midwife will let the doctor know. The midwives work in a team uh, together with an assistant nurse or undersköterska. Um, so usually you'll have two people taking care of you. Um, and... There are several shifts in a 24-hour period. So usually there's a morning shift, an afternoon shift, and a night shift. So it goes during the night. Um, so if you stay, say if you stay for 24 hours in the hospital, you might meet um, six different people. Um, so that might be good to know that, that you will not have the same people caring for you uh, for 24 hours because they also have work hours, of course. Um, in most hospitals in Sweden, uh, the midwife will care for two, sometimes three um, uh, families at the same time. This can be good to know because the midwife might not be able to be in the room uh, continuously uh, during uh, the whole birth because um, she might be he or she might be caring for somebody else sim simultaneously. Um, but if there are any reasons that you need the midwife to be in the room, just call the midwife and so, the, so the staff will, will be there as, as much as they can. Okay, so now we're going to jump along to the routines that, ha uh, that uh, happen after the baby is born. So after the baby is born, the routines have actually changed over the last, I would say, decade in Sweden. Now the Norm is delayed cord clamping, which it didn't used to be uh, 10, 15 years ago, I think. Um, and what that means is that um, you let the umbilical cord continue to pulsate for at least three minutes before you cut the cord. During the baby's birth, about one third of the baby's blood is still in the co umbilical cord and in the placenta. So it's important for the baby to have those um, these minutes where the cord still pulsates so the baby can have as much of its blood as possible. In Sweden, all 
newborns are offered uh, a vitamin K shot. Um, this is something that you might want to read up on uh, beforehand because some, not everybody asks before they give the vitamin K shot. So it's good to uh, know where you stand in, um, in this choice. To sum it up, why all babies are offered vitamin K is because um, they don't have it in their bodies yet. It develops uh, over time. And vitamin K is very important in the body's ability to coagulate blood. Uh, so this is why it's offered to all babies. Most hospitals adhere to uh, skin to skin uh, for, the la for the first one or two hours after the baby is born. There are an array of benefits with this. Um, and even if you choose not to breastfeed, it's very beneficial for you and baby uh, to be skin to skin. So um, I really recommend this. I will probably do a video on skin to skin uh, in the future as well because it's one of the uh, things that I'm quite passionate about goes hand in hand with uh, with breastfeeding. After the baby is born, the placenta needs to be born. Um, how active and not active um, the midwife is during this time varies from hospital to hospital and situation to situation. But uh, to sum it up, if if this if the person has given birth is not bleeding a lot, uh, you can just wait and see what happens. Um, there are routines in hospitals how fast they want the, the placenta to be born, and this varies, of course, from, from hospital to hospital. Once the placenta is born, uh, the placenta is checked and, is, and uh, make sure that nothing is left in the uterus. And uh, the uterus is checked by touching the uterus, maybe massaging it a little bit uh, to see that there's not a a lot of blood coming out of the uh, from the vagina um, because where in the uterus where the placenta was attached there's no open wound so it's very important that the uterus contracts and closes that wound and that there's not a lot of blood coming out. Some hospitals will uh, routinely take pH um, tests from the baby's umbilical cord and do this from all babies. Please read up on this and um, find out what if your hospital does it routinely and if this is something you want to opt in or out of. Another thing that varies from hospital to hospital is um, giving synthetic oxytocin uh, after the baby is born. In some hospitals, this is done routinely and given to everybody. And in some hospitals, it's, uh, it's given depending on the situation, if it's deemed needed. So please look at that up as well and find out what you would like and also what your hospital's routines are con um, concerning these two things. After the baby has had its first feed, uh, usually... The next step is to weigh and measure the baby in the midwife or assistant nurse will do a quick check and make sure that everything seems okay. Uh, later on, a pediatrician will look at the baby more thoroughly, but it, this is just the first little check to make sure that everything um, seems to be as it should. Postpartum routines vary from hospital to hospital and also depending on if it's your first or or second, third, fifth, <laughs> fourth child. Um, but in some hospitals, you will stay in a postnatal ward. Some hospitals, you can go home after a certain amount of hours. Some hospitals, they will offer care in your house. Uh, and some hospitals, you can uh, be in a low-risk uh, postnatal part of the hospital. So this varies in, uh, from hospital to hospital. So please find out what applies to you and maybe also think about what you would prefer if there are several options where you live. Okay, so these were was an, a quick overview of some of the routines in the hospitals here in Sweden. What did I miss? Did I miss anything? Uh, was there anything that, that you experienced that you were surprised uh, of or something that you wish you would have known that I didn't cover here? Uh, please leave a comment below. I can do another video on this and go uh, in deeper as well. I just wanted to kind of summarize uh, the routines in this video. 
Thank you so much for watching this video. If you want to see more videos like this one, please uh, subscribe to this channel uh, and maybe share it with your friends and I hope I'll see you in my next video. All right, bye! Hey